Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a while since my last video and that's because I've been creating a lot of great content for you guys over on martinschrader.com. So there's going to be free presets, free Lightroom course, going to be a free color grading course. So yeah, head over there, download the free presets, let me know what you thought. And yeah, I'm doing this because I want to keep this YouTube channel as a place for Instagrammers and influencers to send in their photos to me for me to keep doing tutorials like this for you guys because it seems like you guys are learning a lot. So yeah, I'm going to be posting different content over on my website over there. So yeah, go download the free presets guys, let me know what you thought and let's get into this video. Okay, so today we are looking at Maddie Snap's Instagram. So you guys can go give him a follow down in the description. I'll put all of his links down there. And yeah, go give him a follow down there, guys, because he's got some really, really great photos here. And I really like this film or vintage look that he achieves to his photos. So we're going to be working with this one right here, trying to recreate the exact same edit the best we can. So looking at a few of his other images, you can see there's a real flatness to the image and that really helps to sell the film look. There's not much contrast, so um, those blacks are not very harsh. So we're gonna soften them with a fade as well. And then we've got to take out a bit of that vibrance. And yeah, so we've just got really natural looking tones. We don't have to do too much there and we just need to warm it up a touch and yeah really really awesome style really like this one guys and yeah remember all those links are down in the description check them out down there and let's see if we can create something really filmic and a bit vintage and you can see there's quite a bit of warmth in the shadows and yeah let's get into Lightroom see if we can create something pretty cool like this Okay, let's get into it. First thing I'll do is drop the exposure a bit and I'll up the warmth by a hundred or so just to add in that little bit more warmth. Okay, so what I know I'm going to do is add in a really good fade to this image. So I'm going to do something like this. And I'm going to quickly do that before anything else because then I can adjust these accordingly instead of doing it before the curves. It's a bit easier if you get somewhere close to the fade you want. So we know we want to fade because if you look in these black areas, they're very, um, they're not, they've got a nice flatness on top of them. I'll try to show you. So. If I get rid of this, that's what we've got before. Put the fade back in. That's that now. Okay, so lift up the black point, bring the shadows down, otherwise you won't have enough contrast. And then you get the most of the fade with the black point, and then you want a nice gradual curve because we want this image to look very smooth. So uh, highlights can come down as well because there's going to be a flatness to the highlights you can see that just so if you keep your eye on the highlights creates a flatness to the entire image um, Okay, so I'll keep the curve there. It's pretty hard to do the curve all in one go. You'll most likely go back and forth, back and forth between these settings to find out what you like. So since we've added in a real nice fade, we don't have much contrast in the image. 
So I'm going to really bump it up to about 70. And remember, adding contrast down here is different to adding contrast up here. So lifting up the blacks here is different to lifting up the blacks here. Lifting up the blacks here will reveal detail in those areas. So you'll be able to see, say, these hairs, for example, or in those bushes there, you can see the detail if you bring up the blacks here. But if we drop them down, they're gone. We're lifting the blacks here is adding a fade in those areas so that's a very important step or thing to remember and a, what a lot of you guys comment down in the comments so now with this area we sort of want to add in a bit more of a warmth to the image so taking out the shadows is a good way to do that so lift the shadows gives a more warmer vibe that's a brighter day, um, maybe a bit of white, and this one I'm just going to play with the dehaze, you can see there's a lot of glare coming in, I think bring up the dehaze, sort of just, um, it's hard to describe what it does, it sort of takes out the highlights, that is very similar to dropping the highlights, but affects a bit more than the highlights. I'm going to bring it up just because it adds a bit more richness to the image. Okay, it's, it kind of adds in more contrast. Okay, um, these blacks could come up a bit, they seem a bit dark. And then just before I finalize all these settings up here, I'm just going to do a little bit of work in the red, green and blue channels. Okay, so I just very quickly went through the red, green, and blue channels. Now, I didn't do much to it, but I kind of like to do this in my curves because it gives me the option of changing it if I want. Because if I did nothing, if I did nothing to any of these curves, I couldn't be like, I want a little bit in the mid-tones because it will offset all of them. So... I've just done a tiny amount in the red, green and blue and so if I just show you before and after the curves you can see that gets us much much closer to the image we want adding in that fade and then I added a bit of extra blue into the highlights I thought you could see quite a bit up here and if you look a bit into the shirt there, it's maybe a little on the blue side, so I put a bit there. And then just your general uh, little bit of contrast in the shadows by pulling each color down and then a little more in the mid-tones. And yeah, we had a bit too much. Um, where is it? We had... I wanted to cool down the mid-tones a little, so I put a bit more blue in there. We were looking a little yellow, so by putting in some blue there, we sort of cooled it off a lot. So about there was good. So that's what I was thinking in the curves. And yeah, um, it's, it's pretty much part of my uh, preset, this one here. So that's sort of why I went for it. Um, if you guys are after my presets you guys can go get them but that's why I like to do curves just gives you a lot of control with the um, with the ability to add in color take away color and contrast okay let's move on to 
luminance and saturation so we definitely want to take a lot of this away because we're going for a very vintage look so let's take out the vibrance and a bit of saturation okay so now we've done that and we're starting to look a little too cold in the image but now we'll do maybe the most important part we'll just um we'll just touch up up here so i think her white shirt is a little brighter over in the other image we'll lift that up um and a really important step when you want to go for that flat look to your images and it it's what a lot of people do it's a really consistent thing i see in the images i edit is bringing down the highlights you get a lot of detail back in the bright areas and it's just I think it looks it looks a lot better bringing down the highlights a lot of the time so okay so now we've got a really nice flat looking image let's go down the blacks a little so when I'm lifting the blacks like this I'm match I'm trying to match up the amount of detail I can see in those dark areas so like down here for example you can see just how much shadow when how fast it's fading away and I think it's a little too high at the moment so I'm gonna bring that down and that would be too fast so about there and then shadows is the same you're just trying to match up the amount of detail you can see so how far into a hair can you still see detail I'm gonna stop about there okay let's move on so the next really important part to this image getting that vintage look is to add warmth into the shadows so if we come down here let's add in a red or orange so I don't want to go too much of a red let's shift it to a little bit more of an orange and then if I show you that can see you can really see it if you look into the shadows there around you here and up there so I didn't do this in the curves because I feel like it's affecting a large part of the image because shadows and highlights you're sort of affecting half of the image or half of the image where curves you can affect that like you could put red only into the blacks if you wanted or or only into the brighter shadows if you wanted to but the um, we're gonna affect the shadows here because I feel like it's affecting a large amount of the shadows and that's sort of what split toning does it's splitting your image in half rather than having complete control over each and every area in the curves so i've opted to do it in the curve uh split toning here and then since i've done that i'm gonna put a little bit of warmth into the highlights and then that's gonna offset that red a little bit So, um, in the shirt there, we're looking a little blue. Let's just do something like that. And I know I added a bit of blue in the in the uh, curves up here. I actually, I actually took some blue out of the curves up there, so it made it a little warmer by taking that little bit of blue out. 
because remember I added a bit into the middle there, into the mid-tones because we were looking too warm and greenish in there. So adding blue in there does that. Sort of white balanced it a lot. And now we've got that little bit of warmth in the shadows there. And now let's go up to HSL. Now we are trying to get very natural looking tones so we don't have to do too much here. We just want to make the skin tones look nice, get those greens. They look way too warm now so we wanted to make our image look warm but we want to make sure some of these things aren't too warm. So like the greens for example, let's make them a natural looking green again by shifting them away from the warmth oranges are looking a little on the red side maybe that way yellows maybe a little away and then if we look at our jeans down here you can see that they are looking a little closer on the deep blue or purple side so let's go towards a teal now onto saturation so let's drop the reds you can just see that in the lips that it's a bit more desaturated oranges so just looking around there let's up there a little the greens in the background are too saturated at the moment let's bring them down a bit of saturation to those blues Mints, reds maybe maybe and then the yellows I'm gonna bring up the luminance of the yellows so this will this creates a really nice pop to a lot of your images and your colors because say for here here for example you can see that it's a bit brighter throughout her whole hair all her hair and we don't quite have that yet so you can also maybe see it in that rock back there I'm gonna bring up the luminance so that's the brightness of the yellows You can see what effect that has to the image. Really nice. So let's bring it about there. All right, aquas. So I'm just playing with this back and forth. You can see all the areas it's affecting. So it's affecting the water here, the brighter parts of the jeans, and a bit of the sky. And I think all those areas are brighter over in this image. So I'm going to bring that up. And then um, luminance of the blues. I think we could go with slightly deeper blues. So. Um, only subtle Let's bring that down a little and that's looking pretty good let's keep going down gonna add in just a tiny bit of grain there's not a lot let's just add in a little bit um, sharpening we want to keep it pretty smooth let's just keep it at 40 and say up the masking 
Now, okay, so we just need to brighten this one's face. So I've already placed the filter. And what we need to do is just up the exposure a bit. So that looks much better. And now um, we... Uh, it's hard to tell about sharpness, but I think there could be a little bit of clarity in this image over here. Just because if I look in the background, it, in the in the bokeh or in the depth of field, it almost looks sharper back there. So I'm thinking, and it just looks maybe a little more crisp. So I'm thinking maybe a little bit of clarity but this is a very film looking look so you want to I'm going to keep it down because generally when you're going for the film look you want to get rid of the clarity and not have your sharpening too high either so you want a nice smooth natural looking image so I'm going to keep clarity down, but I, I'm, I think there could be a little bit in this one. And I think the cropping is a bit off, so I'll just crop it a little bit. Let's just lift that up. I think it's about there. That's a bit more similar. So I also will add in a bit more saturation back into those greens. They're a bit too desaturated. And then a little bit of luminance to them. Just a little bit. Okay, so and I think we could do with a little bit of brightness the middle of this image here so I think our whites are pretty good if we use like this point down here for a gauge to see how bright and how flat they should be I think that's about right if you look around the image I think our sky is pretty good um, maybe maybe just a touch more to the whites Um, let me brush in the middle here. I think just brightened a little bit through there. Maybe on the neck there. Just a shirt. And then a touch face there. And I think we are about good. Those greens saturation maybe down a touch um, otherwise we look pretty good there could be a touch more of a purple in the skin tones so I just go maybe to green so if I pull green out of the mid tones you get purple it's kind of affecting the entire image. I sort of only want it in the skin tones, but... I think that could be it. It's kind of changing all of our colors, though. But you can see we're a little bit yellow in the skin tones. Shifting that back to a bit more of a red might help. And 
yeah, I might just leave it there, guys. I think we're pretty close. Um, yeah. It's pretty hard to tell for sharpness for this image because it is a screenshot off Instagram. So a bit tricky to get that right. But I think we've done a pretty good job. And yeah, I'll leave it there, guys. Leave a like, leave a comment, and comment down below who you guys want to see in terms of who I should reach out to on Instagram. So you gotta you got to comment their names down in the description and then I'll go reach out to them on Instagram. Comment people that have great images but not too many followers. That way they'll be willing to send in, send in an image to me to do a tutorial on. So it really helps me when you do that, guys. If you like these tutorials, check out my presets. There's a lot of free stuff over on martinstrader.com. So go over there, guys, down in the description. Check it out there. And go give him a follow, guys. He definitely deserves a lot more followers for the work he produces really awesome i love this style and i know a lot of you guys will too so comment down below guys and i'll catch you in the next one cheers